Welcome to the Plant Podcast, the number one podcast focused on emerging industrial thin client technology and manufacturing visualization. My name is Brian. The Plant is brought to you by Thin Manager Software, the global leader in thin client management and industrial mobility solutions. Thin Manager is a Rockwell automation technology. Today's episode is one that I really enjoyed getting to record. I was joined by Amy Carter, Technical Solutions Manager from Gary Electric. Gary is a Thin Manager and Rockwell Automation Distributor in the currently very cold Canada. Amy has really gotten to know the ins and outs of the Thin Manager platform as she used, used it now in, in many of her projects. Amy shared with me a few great stories from customer installation in the wild and talked about some of her favorite Thin Manager features. Today, I'm joined by Amy Carter, Technical Solutions Manager from Gary Electric. Amy has a wealth of Thin Manager knowledge and experience, and I'm really happy to have her join us. Amy, thank you so much for joining us today and and agreeing to talk a little Thin Manager. Yeah, sure. You know, before we get started, tell me a little bit about, I guess, your history, a little bit about yourself and, and what you're up to and um, you know, I, I want to talk about a little bit about Gary Electric, but um, let's start out by just talking about you a little bit. Um, so, so Amy Carter, uh, obviously. Um, so my role is technical solutions manager here at Gary Electric. Um, so Gary Electric is the Rockwell distributor for uh, a good chunk of the southwestern Ontario uh, up here in Canada. So what's called the Golden Horseshoe region. Um A little bit of history about myself. I've worked um, in the automation industry for, I think, 17, 18 years now. Um, It's always been in industrial automation. I love it. It's it's my home. I've always uh, been drawn to the industry. Uh, Brian, we were just talking about the fact that my home is automated and yours as well. I think uh, we're a special kind of people uh, in this industry. Um, my, my past experience has been working with system integrators and OEMs and now here at um, an electrical automation or electrical distributor for automation. Um, and it's actually funny because I had no knowledge of Thin Manager before starting in uh, here three years ago. I had never heard of it. And um, once once I heard about it and saw a demo, uh, I decided I needed to figure everything else, uh, everything about it. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, that- it's a really good way to kind of... I guess from a visualization standpoint, you know, a lot of, especially a lot of the SIs, but a lot of um, distributors as well, kind of once they grab a hold of it, they're like, yeah, this is, this is key for, for all my projects. Well, I I couldn't really, like, I couldn't wrap my head around the fact that I hadn't come across it before. I was actually mad at myself because I I pride myself on keeping up to date and um, being on top of all the technology. Um, So this was three years ago in 2018. Um, it was right after Rockwell acquired um, ACP and Thin Manager, and uh, I was just blown away by everything that it could do. Um, and yeah, I dedicated myself to researching it. Yeah, I thought you would, I guess, uh, been around the Thin Manager product a little bit longer, and and maybe even gone to some of the, like the the old Thin Industrial events and stuff like we had, but but I guess not. A lot of people think that, um, I don't know if it's just because I've spent so much time with it or just because, um, I I spend a lot of time talking to you guys, (laughs) but it feels like I've been around it forever. Um, it's yeah, it's just that much fun. Um, the, the first time I was actually introduced to it, uh, in person was a Rockwell event called BAM back in 2018 and Doug was doing the presentation. Um, so I was in a, a large room, which obviously we couldn't do these days because of because of COVID. Um, but Doug Coulter did the demonstration with the the demo case, and he just went through everything. And I was I was almost my jaw on the floor watching him because I was like, "Holy crap! How's he doing this? Like this is amazing!" <laughs> and like, I mean, you've seen Doug present over the years, and I'm like, it's almost like witchcraft or magic or something. Like his hand movements are so smooth, and it looks so easy. And and there's just something about it that you're like, there's no way it's that easy. Like, because it does, well, it literally looks like magic. You're like, this is all fake, like smoke and mirrors. Right? Yeah, he's pretty well polished at it. I, I will say when I demo Thin Manager, it's probably not that smooth. <laughs> <laughs> 
but yeah, you know, I kept expecting Doug to pull like a rabbit out of his hat or something at the end of it. I, I was just super impressed. Uh, and then the next day I actually uh, sat in a presentation with Tom as well. Uh, so Tom did the the commercial presentation and Doug did the technical demo. And I was just like, holy smokes, this thing is like, this thing is amazing. I, I almost felt like I was, you know, being converted to another religion. I'm like, I need to go tell the story of this out there right now. <laughs> I need to get everybody who's not using Thin Manager using it. And I didn't even know anything about it. I was just like, I feel like everybody needs to use this right now. Yeah. Um, uh, you, you know, one of the, the things I think is cool too, uh, dealing with the team is just like to, to see them adapt things to, to add modules, to do things for customers. So like, I'd really love for it to do that. And then, you know, a week later they're like, okay, now it does that, you know? Yeah, like we've had, um, we had a customer who who did a Thin Manager install. So we, uh, as Geary Electric, helped them. Uh, we have a group in the company called the Process Group. Um, and a large portion of the work the Process Group does is actually Thin um, thin Client installations. So we help our customers, you know, they, they come to us, either system integrators, OEMs, or even end users. And they say, we really want to go and do something like this. And they explain what they want. And we're like, oh, man, that's awesome. Thin Manager can do it. So, you know, we'll help um, commission commission the server with them, install the software, set up display clients, um, and, and give them like a turnkey system where they just drop their software and their, um, their like SE project and they're good to go. Um, so we had one of them, uh, an OEM had installed a large, um, a large thin manager install base at their, their customer and their customer came back and they wanted to play videos on it. Um, and using the, um, the video module or the, the remote desktop, uh, video player in windows was causing a lot of issues. It was really slow because you were having to, to RDP into it. And the way it was displaying was causing some jaggedness and there were issues. Um, okay. So we're like, oh, well, we should be able to find find a way around that. You know, we didn't we didn't want to leave the customer with that. And it took, I think, a day, <laughs> not not very long, wow. uh, but we took a day and we figured out, yeah, we can use a streaming server and um, actually kind of trick Thin Manager. But using the streaming server uh, output uh, an RTP stream, I'm sorry, an RTSP stream uh, into Thin Manager and have Thin Manager uh, think that it was using a camera. Uh, but it was really just tapping into an RTSP three stream playing the video and it worked beautifully. Uh, there were no delays. It wasn't jagged. Um, so it's, you know, uh, I think the streaming software they had to add on cost about $15 of all time. So it wasn't a large investment for them. No, no, not at and all. It, they were able to, to solve that problem instantly. And it was really nice to see that because it's like, you know, you, a lot of products or a lot of softwares, it's like, if it doesn't do it, it doesn't do it. You're, you're out of luck. Like there's nothing you can do. And we were able to say, okay, well, Thin Manager has all of these modules and all of these options. What can we do to make it work? Um, because the, the camera streaming through that real time streaming protocol is so fast. So let's just turn the video into a streaming feed. That's cool. Yeah. And, and how many customers can you come back and say, okay, it's going to be $15 in one day. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, the, the labor was so easy. So, and actually it's funny, we used, um, the term mon, um, so the, the active X control within factory talk view SE, so they can put a button on their, um, they could put a button on their HMI to launch different videos. So using that, um, the terminal monitor, uh, configuration, uh, in the active X, they were able to pick which display client they wanted to run, which would tap into the different camera and run the different feeds. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> so it, it was, uh, yeah. it was beautiful. It was um, flawless and it didn't require a large amount of engineering. It was adding buttons on the screen to something that if they were to try to do this another way would have potentially taken a lot longer and, and caused a lot more headaches. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, wow. have, have you, um, have you used Thin Manager 12 at all? Not yet. I need to update the demo kit and play with it, but I haven't had a yeah. demo kit yet. I'm I'm waiting to get my my demo kit back as well. I was supposed to have it this week. It's probably gonna be next week. So yeah, no, I I totally get that. I really um, used a little bit of Thin Manager 12 in beta, but I haven't really gotten to sink my hands into it too much. Uh, but the reason I ask is, you know, they've the the new Thin Manager 12 has the web browser display client and is starting to use you know Docker and containers. Uh, to do things as well, which, you know, right now they're really just serving up the browser. 
uh, without the RDP connection. But, um, you know, the, the idea is that moving forward, they're going to be able to use these containers to serve up all kinds of stuff. That's going to be amazing. Because, I mean, the first the first thing you do when you deploy, like, a server instance is install Chrome. <laughs> and then you set right. up display clients for Chrome. So it, it saves a step. But having more built in is going to be phenomenal. Um, that was actually, yeah. I think I talked to Nick about that. Or was it Doug? I think two years ago. And I was like, when are you getting your own web browser? And they're like, it's coming. It's coming. We can't wait. Yeah. No, it's, um, it's, it's here. So, and I think it's... Uh, Based off the uh, the Firefox uh, open source uh, backbone, if you will, uh, but I'm not positive. It could be it could be Chrome, like Chrome Canary or something. I like heard that. it was Firefox ish um, okay. when I talked to I think it was Jamie or Nick um, or someone during mm-hmm. Automation Fair, and I'm super excited about that. Just for for compatibility, I mean, a lot of times what we see customers wanting to do is there's your HMI, but they want everything else. So whether it's their ERP system or whether it's like an MES system or even you know uh, something like Excel, they 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 interact with almost everything through a web browser. Right. Mm-hmm. So being able to have that functionality built in is going to be great. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think there, there's a lot of potential there and I think it was a, a good step um, in the right direction, I think for future expansion, for sure. And you know, what's the best part about all of this? Like, then this is one thing I've told people um, o- over the, the last couple of years, which, you know, it's more and more true every day. A lot of the features in Thin Manager people don't need yet. You know what I mean? Like when when you guys added in the um, the NIMI bands, um, you know, or, you know, using the HoloLens, like that Thin Manager added those features in before anybody was really using them. And people still aren't, are, you know, it's not widespread in the industry yet, but there's such a forward thinking attitude and keeping those features future ready that you can just drop in and do anything. And yeah. that's really been impressive for me. You know, typically, I mean, you're familiar. Industrial automation is usually 20 years behind the commercial market. So, you know, you're expecting at any day you can hook a virtual boy up to something as opposed to like a hollow lens, right? Right, right. Um, and seeing, you know, current day technology, you know, that you're not having to wait years to integrate it into the plant floor has been phenomenal. You know, customers that want to go mobile or wireless not having to install some insane huge package or customize applications to be able to just pick it up and go has been a godsend for a lot of people. Yeah, I agree. I actually, so I started uh, about seven years ago uh, with ACP, with the Thin Manager team. And um, it was, you know, really right before mobility and the, and the relevance, you know, mobility uh, hit the product. And, um, so we, when we launched it, you know, I, I think it hit just what you're talking about. A lot of people are like, why, why would I want tablets and like mobile devices in, in production? Like that, that's, that's not really a thing. And then you fast forward a year or two and people are coming to us saying, Hey, I really want to add, you know, my, my, my floor maintenance crew, the ability to have tablets you know, so they can go around and do stuff. And lo and behold, the product already did it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, at that point, it was like, oh, no, no, that's fine. Just add these QR codes and the and th- this way to resolve to locations. And you, you're good to go. You know, the app's already on the app store kind of thing. And uh, I mean, people were just blown away. I mean, it's one of those things that when we show it live, people are, you know, jaws to the floor anyway. Um, but for people that finally said, okay, I want, you know, to get alerts on a phone or I want to add tablets into, into production. Um, just being able to do it without any really special, anything was just huge. I I think a lot of people don't even believe that though. (laughs) I've had that, that conversation with lots of people and they're like, okay, well, you know, when you're, you're talking about the product and you're showing some of the features, they're like, okay, well, what does it cost for this now? What does it cost for the QO cards and to go mobile? And you're like, no, it's already built into the software. And they're like, no, really, what does it cost? And you're like, no, man, this <laughs> stuff is just that powerful. It's already there. And then you look at, you know, the the amount of memory the software uses is nothing. It's, you know, so minuscule on the machine that the, you know, people really don't believe it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think yeah, I've actually I mean, argued with someone at one point before over it. Yeah. 
Yeah, I was I was amazed when I first started. Like the idea that that you know we were pushing BIOS over a, a, such a small amount of memory uh, just to to boot clients and all that kind of stuff. It really kind of blew my mind. And of course, I I was fairly new to the industry, so. I, you know, I, none of it never really made sense to me when I first started anyway. So it was maybe even that much more mind blowing to see how, how little resources it took up. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just so light on the, on the system and it just does so much and it's actually um, hilarious. So we have this running in a demo in the office and we've built so much into it. And, you know, we, we typically ask people when we're talking about a system, you know, what do you think this setup would cost? What do you think you need for this setup? And everyone's always astounded. You're like, you just need the license for these three terminals. And we've got, you know, six or seven TVs there plus tablets. It's like, this would cost four terminal licenses plus what you already have for your software and then the hardware. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, especially from the mobile perspective, being able to use off the shelf hardware, um, nobody believes that either. They're like, no, no, you need a special tablet. <laughs> this can't just be an iPad or like an Android tablet. We actually have both in our demo to show people. And they're like, no, no, there's there's some trick here. It's not it's not just pick up any tablet and go. Yeah. Yeah. No, I um, I, you know, I think a lot of people might think that you need a special tablet just because they put this real industrial case on it in case it gets dropped. <laughs> well, and, and everything else. I mean, if, if you were to look at some, some other competitors products, not for, cause there's nothing that compares to thin manager, but some other competitors, tablets or products to connect to like um, some other type of system. They're usually very rugged, very expensive and very custom, custom designed custom OSs. It's not just an app that you install and go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, so let me ask you a little bit like what, um, you know, since we're just, you know, shooting the, uh, the stuff and talking about this, what, what's some of the, like, what's a really cool thin manager project that you've done? Um, so probably the coolest has been with, um, an OEM in this area and, uh, they have, they have multiple sites that they work with. Um, and it was, it was a long, uh, process to go through with them. Um, but they, they originally just wanted to update some HMIs on their plant floor. Um, so they were looking, yeah, we just want to replace, um, these standalone station HMIs with some newer HMIs and the conversation just, you know, kind of trans, uh, morphed into, well, do you want to try doing it a bit differently? You know, do you want to keep replacing what you always have, or do you want to, do you want to update it and go, go with something else like a distributed HMI? And as the conversation continued, I was like, well, why are you doing this? Why wouldn't you just keep it running? Um, their, their IT had mandated that uh, no one could run windows seven or um, below on the plant floor. So it had to be windows 10 and above. Um, and all of these computers were running windows XP <laughs> or SVU 32. <laughs> yeah. um, because that's the way it is. You know, in, in industry, if it's working, you don't touch it. Um, but their their IT was becoming more involved in the plant floor, and they were like, "You you can't do this." And it, it came to um, a, as the conversation progressed, they had multiple sites, like double digit sites out there, with probably you know ten plus PCs out there all running Windows XP. Um, so from a from a security standpoint, that was terrible. IT was not right. happy. Um, and this actually wraps into a funny story because because as we were having these discussions, the IT um, manager was going out onto the plant floor because they were saying how secure everything was on the plant floor, um, but telling them why we needed, they needed to upgrade to windows 10. And, you know, the engineering personnel were like, no, no, it's fine. Everything's locked down. People only have access to the HMI. And as they were walking around, they, they walked by um, one area or one uh, PC on the line and someone was playing a flight, a fighter jet simulator <laughs> um, so instead of running the HMI, the HMI, they're flying a fighter jet and shooting right. down planes. Very <laughs> secure. Very secure. Yeah. Yes. So the controls engineer is sitting there just gobsmacked because he just kept saying how great the computers are and let's keep it the same way. And the IT person as well is like, yeah, our network is secure. No one can get onto these computers. And then, and then they both walk into that. Um, and that I think really helped push them on this journey because they're like, you know, no, no one operating a machine, they, they should be focused on the machine, not, not playing a game on the, the computer right. that the company's provided. <laughs> That's um, awesome. 
Oh, it's it's a great story because it's like, you know what, when you think about it in every place you, you know, every plant floor you've ever stepped on, I guarantee you someone's plugged a USB in there and gotten on the internet or someone's, you know, side loaded a game or watching movies or something. Um, and once they, once they did this change uh, to Thin Manager, it doesn't happen anymore. So, so this um, company with the double digit sites um, w- through the Geary process group and working with them, they were actually able to change over their first plant in less than a week, uh, wow. which is what's super cool about it. So we, we helped them commission their server. We helped them, you know, stage everything with their hardware. So they actually ran a full factory acceptance test in our staging area. So we have multiple PLCs. We downloaded their programs, connected thin clients and the server to it. And they basically ran their plant floor for a week virtually Uh, And then they drove to site through the server in the cabinet and then changed over the stations one by one flawlessly. I I think they got to site Sunday and they were driving home Thursday night and the site's been running now for two years. That's great. And I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. Like a a reason to do that. Um, The company was actually concerned. They were like, you know what? People are going to fight this. It's change. It's new. You know, these guys aren't going to be able to play flight simulator. (laughs) Right. But uh, a- after the first site went in, they're like, everybody's lining up to do the next one because they see the value in it. You know, they reduced, you know, they, they had multiple PCs. There was actually one PC for their HMI and one PC to interface with their ERP system. So now it's on the same PC. And now for remote support, you know, engineering is able to dial into uh, the server and talk to um, each one of those stations instead of having to go, you know, they had a huge list of IP addresses. Now they're able to just get into the Thin Manager server and shadow the terminal that um, that they need to look at. That's super cool. Yeah. And, and Solitaire <laughs> and Minesweeper are very... Uh... <laughs> very on the decline as far as the amount of hours that they're being played. So now that's, that's really cool. Un- well, unfortunate it, for the people who want to play the games, but you know what? <laughs> yeah. Well, what, you know, when somebody says, what do you do at work? And you say, well, I play solitaire or oh, I, I've gotten really far in my flight simulator. <laughs> that's not, that's not really the right answer there. <laughs> I've almost made it around the world. <laughs> Um, yeah. And it's, you know, the, the, the application link link feature, I think is what sold them after they did that, that, um, plant floor tour and saw the flight simulator, (laughs) you know, we Uh, we were running the demo with app link and we show, you know, closing down the HMI and the HMI comes back up. And I think we did it probably 10 times till everyone was confident in it, but it's like, look, there's no desktop on this thing. Here, plug whatever you want into the USB ports. They do not work. Like there is no getting around this. It does what you tell it to and nothing else. Well, yeah, you know, I was I was going to ask you what your favorite Thin Manager feature is. Um, but, you know, AppLink is like one, it's like one of the first ever Thin Manager features, right? Just being able to say, okay, this terminal is going to get this application and only this application without any kind of authentication um, other than the terminal. And it just, it, it comes up. You know, all the time people are like, I, I love this. This this is what we need. And it's like, I mean, literally one of the first features of Thin Manager. But it's such it's such a good feature. And I think a lot of people just really um, don't don't know it exists. I mean, again, before I knew about Thin Manager, I used to set up PCs for for installations. So I would go to a site, I would install a software, put a put a PC there. You create a guest account on the PC for the um, the, the person that's going to be operating the machine and you hope they don't figure out the password to get into the admin account so they can install stuff. You know, right. there, there was no option to just limit what they're able to open. And now that I've seen this, I'm like, how can you do anything else? Like if you're, if you're running a, anything on any kind of PC where you don't want any other applications to run, it's just, it works and it's so easy. Yeah. Well, before I came to ACP, I, I worked for a company that, that ran group homes and I actually, uh, you know, uh, basically imaged and wiped and, and reset a bunch of old XP like compact computers and put them in each home so the employees could clock in and clock out. And, um, you know, so so there's an example where the PC existed for one thing, you know, just one clock in clock out system and the amount of trouble to go through to try to prevent people from using it for everything else was just <laughs> just wild you know well, and, and some there right 
Yeah, it's just sitting there in the living room and somebody's like, well, I'm bored. I could play a game or I could, you know. And so you're going through and trying to uninstall things and block things, do guest accounts, like all that different stuff to try to keep people out of being able to do that when, yeah. I mean, if I, I wish I had had a feature like, like AppLink where I could have just said, this is it. This is all this is doing. It's just, it's so. amazing. Like, I, I don't know if it's my favorite feature, but it's, it's the most amazing one <laughs> because it, it, it just seems so simple, you know, and it's, you wish everything had an option for something like that. Yeah. Well, it's practicality, practicality winning out. I yeah. Mean, absolutely. Well, so let me, let me ask you, um, on the other side of that coin, you know, and I've asked quite a few people this question, but what, uh, if you could add anything to Thin Manager, what what do you think you would do? Oh, geez. <laughs> yeah, that's, it's that's a like an on the spot question. kind of question, right? Well, because there's so there's so much that it already has, and I mean, I know that sounds that sounds like a canned response or something. <clears throat> um, I mean, once once you guys put in the web browser, the, I mean, it's come up a couple times talking to people. Um, where, where some customers have thought about cloud connectivity and things like that. I'm not sure if that's, that's on the pipeline. Um, but I mean, there, there are um, conversations we're getting into with customers about um, using Azure and, and providing um, cloud space to them. So I'm mm-hmm. sure this will be something that comes up in the future. Um, and that's probably the, the, the biggest one is that flexibility. Just because when you do go into a thin manager system, you have to have uh, hardware on prem. Um, right, and that can be right. a, a bit of a capital investment for for some people if they're not willing to do that. Um, that would be the only thing I, I could say. I mean, every time you guys come out with a new feature, I'm like, oh, this is awesome! Like, <laughs> there's never you guys should have done that. It's like this is great. Right. Well, on and on the marketing side, you know, there, we always try to whenever they have a new version release, is, is you know which which ones will make the biggest splash. But the funny thing is, that it's from a long-term standpoint, the ones that might seem like they'll make the splash at the beginning over time. I mean, it's not that they don't make that splash, but it's some of the the features that maybe sound a little less enticing, but are so practical that, that they end up being like a real cornerstone for people. Like this is what they have to have. Well, was it, was it version 10 or version? No, it was version 11 where you guys allow um, being able to dynamically move your monitors around. Yeah. Right. That was fantastic. Um, and yeah. it's not because it was such a pain before, but it was like, oh man, this is neat now. <laughs> you know, yeah. Well, it'll, those around. Yeah. And, and you can now, you know, really set up your control room or whatever exactly the way you want to. And yeah, that was, that was a great one. And it, it's such yeah. a small change. And it, like you said, doesn't look like it'll make a big splash, but for, for usability, when you go through it, you know, that, and it's, again, it sounds kind of silly, but, some of the the most important ones people have loved are, are the most basic, like the the overlay feature for people being able to overlay uh, a camera onto an HMI without having to reprogram their HMI or trying to figure out how to interface things has been mm-hmm. huge for a lot of customers. Yeah, because you know, editing uh, your HMI is a big deal, especially if it's a validated system, right? Right. I I totally agree. Yeah, we had uh, I had. Um, uh, an integrator on one time who his, his wish list item, he dealt a lot with uh, pharmaceuticals and clean rooms and the ability to be able to face to face interface with somebody back in a control room through a tablet, to be able to use the front camera on the tablet, you know, to see your own face and then do an overlay of somebody in, you know, in the control room outside of the clean room so that you didn't have to basically get, you know, desanitized or unclean in order to talk face to face, which I thought was an interesting feature too. And I think it's probably much harder to actually pull that one off, but that was an interesting wish list feature. That is interesting. I mean, I'm sure you could probably, there, there's other ways. Of course, my mind always thinks there, there's like, you know, th- there's an expression, there's more than one way to skin a cat. I find mm-hmm. within manager, <clears throat> excuse me, there's like 20 different ways to do anything. <laughs> so as you're talking, I'm like, oh, well, they could install like a wireless camera there and they could move that around. Right. 
<laughs> well, yeah, and I think I think that ingenuity, you know, is how people solve things. And then when they're listing features to try to build into a version, it's not that that doesn't ever, you know, hit the list. It probably just gets moved down based on other priorities and stuff. So, yeah, I think I, I think that the biggest one. that that's that's the biggest feature within Manager of of everything else is the fact that you have such flexibility to do things so many different ways. Um, you're not you're not locked into here's here's your options and your settings just go from there you can actually tweak and add things and move them around right yeah <laughs> yeah the 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 modules in general too really expand a lot um you know when i first started using thin manager i mean i guess it was thin manager seven or six you know so yeah i'm dating myself but um but yeah i mean just being able to add little modules and it's like at that time, everything, you know, you want to add a keyboard, add a module, you want to, you know, but it, it's amazing how robust it can become, you know, once you start adding everything. And, and it's a lot easier than adding things on Windows. <laughs> I've, yeah, I've had well, that yeah. come up before. They're like, is it like Windows where you have to do the drivers, everything else? I'm like, no, no, it's fine. Just click the button and you're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it works a lot more flawlessly. The, the only issues I think I've ever seen anyone have with Thin Manager is Windows itself. <laughs> Well, yeah, we probably don't need to get into that heart. conversation. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole different conversation. Well, um, you know, before I let you go, you know, is there any, um, I don't know, projects on the horizon or what do you got moving forward? Uh, is there anything worth talking about? There, There is one that I would really like to tell you about, but it's under an NDA, so I can't. Okay. Um, okay. I understand that. But but the end the end customer oh no I can't <laughs> I was trying to think of something I could say that wouldn't violate the NDA uh, I'll just say it's in a location um, where there's no other thin manager uh, and it will be um, possibly one of the most northernmost thin manager installs in the world when it gets completed very cool well I won't I won't press you to say any more than that that's uh, that's pretty neat. <laughs> Yeah, I really, I really wish I could tell you more details, but it's, it's really cool. And if, um, if the installation does go through, I will probably reach out to you guys and ask for a thin manager flag so they can plant it somewhere. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah. You know, and always looking for success stories and stuff. So. Well, yeah, we fun. just, we just finished a success story with Tom, actually. One of our integrators in our area, uh, Tom sent it over about an hour ago. Uh, so oh, that's cool. going to get published online shortly. Very cool. Well, um, Amy, thank you so much, you know, for coming on and talking and just sharing some some stories and experiences. Thank you very much for uh, having me, Brian, and take care. Absolutely. That's all the time we have today for this episode of The Plant. Uh, I'd like to thank Amy Carter again for, for coming on and, and talking with us a little. If you like this episode, please click the subscribe button and subscribe to The Plant for a monthly discussion on emerging automation technologies. For more information on Thin Manager, please visit thinmanager.com from any of your devices. I'm your host, Brian Harned, and we look forward to talking to you next time on The Plant.